and of course we will be using my test bench which is a Ryzen 9 5900X it's got 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 from Team Group and of course it's an MSI Pro Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard from MSI and of course it is housed in the Be Quiet Dark Base 700 with a 650 watt power supply and of course it's got a one terabyte NVMe and then it's got another 500 gig for boot okay then so first step with any water cooling build is block installation so this is a Ryzen 5900X and we will get some thermal paste on here first is block installation of course you want to make sure that your retention mechanism is already installed that one now with the standoffs actually installed I'm going to take the block which it is a Summit Pro CPU block from Bits Power. So go like that. Each side down like that. As for the retention, what you want to make sure is you do this first, screw in one side, then you screw in that side like that, then like that like that okay. when it comes to block insulation with anything is pressure evenly on each side so you start with one corner you do the other side the exact same like that then you go like that like that and obviously because this is a summit block it does come with a allen key so once it's down, what you want to do is take the Allen key that's included, go like this, there we go, and that is the block installed. And then of course it comes down to fittings, I am using these soft tubing fittings from Bits Power, as you can see, very shiny, I'm going to put one there, I'm going to don't have to go that tight with soft tubing as long as it seats it's fine otherwise you're going to end up crushing these threads but here you're going to end up killing that and obviously because this is acrylic gotta be careful you do not go cracking it because that will cause water to leak there we go right that's done now we get this installed to the case so now what you're probably going to be thinking of, right, you've got the motherboard installed. You don't want to power any of the motherboard up. You don't want any of the 8 pins or the 24 pin connected because that will be the next step after this. First of all, you want to try and find a placement for your radiator because if you find the placement in your radiator, then you will know where the loop is going to head. Now, I'm going to put it up here because that's where it's going to fit the best up here. And first of all, we're going to get the fans installed, then we will talk about the rest. So, once you have your fans installed on the radiator, then you need to actually fit the fittings, which this is, of course, where they go, the Bits Power Leviathan 2 360. It is a thin 360 rad. They do do a much thicker radiators from this. So... Need to install these now here. Okay then, so the rad is actually installed now. So as you can see, it's by here. Now we've got to put in the pump and then we've got to choose the, the tubing runs. So yeah. Okay, so now we discuss pump res combo placement. Now, of course you want to make sure that for the outlet of the pump, you want to make sure that you've got a run going through here. This by here, is actually a stop valve if you open it by by there sorry it's tight but if i open this by here now no fluid would come out so it would help me bleed the system so now once you've got that placement done what you want to really do is just figure out where you want to really put it put it in a place where you think would be all right now you want to push your radiator back 
Okay, so now you've got the placement of where your radiator is. Now, you do want the tube coming off the but here directly into the inlet of this side of the block because this is where the water goes through goes through the fins and then comes out this side so you want it coming from the bottom to the top because you always want the water coming from there straight out otherwise you are going to burn up your pump so what we'll do now is find the best placement for this and yeah you still don't want to attach any cables whatsoever we'll get to that part after this so i was thinking maybe there because all you need is one coming by here down to there as long as it's going going down this is what they call the that is where the water is going to come in if you had in one of these slots it would actually make like a waterfall effect and it would actually cause bubbles to get up in the loop so we will be back okay then so that's the res combo now attached you have to attach this one with a nut and bolt see and then you've got to use this end to attach it otherwise if you've got this run going around everywhere in your system just in case you tip it over then they're gonna have a lot of problems now right now since this is done now you've got to actually do for the the runs so what runs are going to look the best obviously you need one coming from here to there then that one to the radiator but there and then you want this one to go there which is going to be a very awkward bend so let's get back to the rest of the video so now when it comes to the tubing this is the tubing the correct tubing you need you're gonna to have to do this first of all of course so what you're gonna to have to do is you're going to have to take off this for a minute. Take this one off. You're going to have to go like this and visualize where it's going to go. So you want one there to there without the kinking. So what you do is you measure it up by with your hand. Then what I would also do is go a little bit further so you've got a bit more slack. Now I use a Stanley blade to cut them. That's not the best way of doing it, but of course do what you're actually used to so when you go by there now you go like this all you want to do is cut one little hole like that okay so now you've got the, the actual run best using that part then what you want to do is put this over the tube in you want to go like this you want to press it in like that like that now you're going to make sure it's sitting correctly i'm going to tighten up this tube right here like that now remember you don't want to over tighten because this is soft tubing so it's not really going to leak but of course there we go that's done now as you can see with this now you've got a bit of slack so what you could do is go like that cut this much off by here and then you'd have a perfect run going from there so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually stick this by here now in here like this. Okay. Then I'm going to take this off. Exact same process. Put this on the tube like that. Then you put this here on the pump itself. Now I'm going to make sure that it's seated correctly. Now of course the way it's by there now I could have actually slackened that up a little. But... This is just me showing you how to water cool. It's not exactly show, me showing you what to do when it comes to a run. See, simple run from the pump to the CPU. Now you're going to need to run from here to there. That's probably going to be the most trickiest to do because of the space in by here. But what you want to really do is take the tubing again, maybe on this side. You want to go like this. And then you want to go like this by here. And then like that and you really want to visualize where it's going to go and remember always cut off more than you need so at least you have room to cut okay then now with your tubing cut to length take off this same procedure as before exactly the same over that then you want to put it on the tubing like this like that then you want to put this back over like that 
Now, of course, when you're putting down this, you will actually tighten up the fitting itself as well at the same time. There we go. Now we've got to take this fitting off, which is going to be an absolute nightmare. Okay, then. So I'm going to grab the collar again like that. Now, this is probably a little bit too long, but this is just me showing you the basics of doing it. So you want to tighten that up now, get it on the collar. Remember, do not mash the thread, otherwise you will damage it or never get this off at all. There we go. Right, so when you go like that now, that's fine. It's a little bit too long, but that doesn't matter. Now you need to get one from here to there. That's the next process. Which should actually be quite easy. So if I now this run is going to be very tricky because of the way it is. Now, of course, you don't want this in way of the fans, but of course, that's just one of those things. This is the problem with soft tubing. See, that's the problem with soft tubing. Now, of course, if you had a bigger case, then you wouldn't have to really worry. Or, what you could do is this. Take this off, like that. Or what you can do is actually get rotary fittings. Fittings that go to an angle, see? Much easier to use, and you won't have to worry about extreme bends. This is probably the best one, because you can just go like this. Tighten this on. Then you go like that. Then, take the collar off. Let it drop in the flow. Right. So now, now you've got this. Now you've got this reference by here, like that. Like that. Now, the, the run doesn't have to be as bad. So you could do that. Or what you could do is put another rotary fit in there, and then you'd be all right for the actual fitting itself. or you could grab another one of these now this is something similar but this one you can actually turn see so i could have a fit in by here now that's the run yeah i would say it's not probably the prettiest that's the problem with soft tubing but the most important step of all and that would be doing a leak test. Now, remember that a lot of people will say not to bother with leak testing soft tubing, but I always do it for a bit of caution. You never know when you actually need to do it. So, what I'm going to do is take this off now. So, now I've taken off this fit in. You got to put on this. This would be the stopper. This goes on one side like that. Then you've got to rotate it, of course, on that side. But what we're going to do first of all is put it on here. So now this is the EK leak tester. So now you've got to attach this bit to here. So what you want to do is connect this bit to here like that. that now of course the valve isn't open so we want to go like this now go like that okay okay all right now you want to pump it up it's meant to go up to the green so now what i'm actually doing is doing a leak test now i'm using the ek one i have pressurized the system just on the green bar on the green line but there you leave it there for 15 minutes and if that needle but there moves means you've got a leak in the system and you won't be able to actually put any fluid in so we'll wait 15 minutes and then we'll be back now you need the fluid i am using 
cryo fuel from EK because Bitpower doesn't actually have clear fluid anymore. And of course, you're going to need one of these. This is a fill bottle, and this one is specifically a Bitpower one. So now the it's been 15 minutes, the actual needle hasn't moved, so now you can release the pressure like that. Go like this. Now, then you can remove this. So, right, let's fill this up now. Okay, take this off. Now, with your fill bottle full, okay, you want to grab this bit by here, which will actually help you because it'll give you an extension. Like this, put this on here, like that. Then all you do is you put this inside the tube by here, in here, like this. I'll have to go through the back to do this, so like this. Now what you want is actually one of these. This, you connect to the 24 pin on your motherboard by here. On your 24 pin, connect this here, like this, right, like that. Now what you want to do is take the 24 pin that's coming off your pump and you want to put it on one of these headers okay so this would be for low speed that's going to probably get the best results so here we go one now you don't want the system to actually run dry Okay, and so that's basically it, how to water cool. Uh, just make sure you put a couple of paper towels down just in case, but I doubt they'll leak, especially if you've done a leak test. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you, but of course you can do differently to this because there's all different kinds of methods. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, and this is Richard for Welsh Tech. Good. Bye.